Yeah, I was just about to say the rounding up thing is helpful. Yeah. Well, you're not going to, you don't think about those extra couple pennies, but it does add up over time. It really does. It really does. Um, I used to do that uh, when I used to use my debit card a lot with a, an mm -hmm. old bank I used to use and just go right into savings. And There's after a, a while, it kind of adds up. What's that app? It's called, I think it's called Acorns. Yeah, and it does, does something it like as that. Well. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. kind of cool. Well, there huh. you go. Okay, well, if you can, show small businesses some love today. It's National Mom and Pop Business Owners Day. According to the U.S. Small Business Administration, there are more than 27 million small businesses in the country. These small mom and pop shops and restaurants are a critical part of our economy. Many may be closed amid the coronavirus crisis, but if a small business is open in your area, show them your appreciation by shopping there. Use hashtag Mom Pop Business Owners Day on social media. Uh, every day is a good day to shop small business, and uh, today uh, you can be recognized for it, I guess, or something. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I think we feature a lot of these small businesses here on uh, Good Morning Idaho. Yeah, we we love just talking about, like, our little favorite finds yeah. around town, and I think it's nice. I mean, yes, there's always going to be the big box stores and the chains, but, you know, there's people just doing such creative things yeah. and such quality goods that oh, you can yeah. buy. So, yeah, I try. Uniqueness, I, really yeah. I, I think, def really defines and little mom and pop Yeah, places. and it makes each area different. Otherwise, you're just driving town to town, and it all looks the same. same. Stuff, okay. Yeah. Speaking of that, yeah, now you can soon shop for some outdoor gear, drink a beer at Indian Ooh. Creek Plaza. This is in Caldwell. Our media partners over at Boise Dev, they reported Mesquite <laughs> Creek Outfitters. They leased a space on Main Street. This space is going to be a part bar, <laughs> part store. Uh. The tap room side was going to be almost exclusively locally brewed beers and wines. Now, meanwhile, the retail side, you're going to feature, uh, they're going to feature some upscale outdoor clothing, um, outdoor gear and more. Mesquite Creek Outfitters, they plan to open mid to late summer this year. Sooner the better, because the weather is getting real nice right now. Exactly. So, uh, Time to start hiking. Yeah. And I wonder what kind of gear, is it kind of maybe like REI-ish? Like, sure. Sure, maybe yeah. like that. I think that's such a good business model also um, that they do that I know that uh, a lot of the new Albertsons are doing. Put a bar in the store and then or go shopping. Super dangerous. Yeah, yeah, you have like a couple <laughs> beers and you're like, you know what I need? Literally everything. I need a canoe <laughs> right now. Some impulse buying. <laughs> Your wife's going to be like, what did you do? And be like, I have uh, some explaining to do. we needed a canoe. <laughs> uh, are you feeling... <laughs> Are you feeling lucky? A new nightclub is poised to open on the Grove Plaza in Boise. BoiseDev.com reports Lucky Sevens Nightclub place signed uh, in an empty retail space on the plaza. Officials say the club is from the team behind Barrel House Brew Pub and Grill in Garden City. No word yet when it will open, but a timer on Lucky Sevens splash page is ticking down the days, hours, and minutes to June 30th. Hmm. So I would assume that's when that opens, June 30th, and that's the, unless that's just another like, uh, hey, we're, we have another announcement to make. We've got another two months or something. <laughs> that would be a cruel joke. Um, yeah, I feel that that is going to be fun. We always sure. look out over the Grover. We try to get in that area, so maybe we'll see the nightclub people just wandering out yeah, into the streets. That's right. We used to joke because when we used to be able to move the camera on top of the Grove, it always looked like a, uh, a party down there. Because now it, it, it literally will be. Now it will be. I love it. Okay, 616 now. On your Tuesday, we're taking a live look outside. Speaking of which, right, this is courtesy of our Bronco Motors Hyundai Tower Cam. And uh, still ahead on Good Morning Idaho, we are going to have more with Frankie Catapias. He has your forecast and This is Frankie Catapias with the Idaho News 6 forecast. Well, good morning, Idaho. 618 is the time for you on this Tuesday. And we are starting off right now with that live look at downtown Boise, which looks like a whole lot of nothing. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it just shows that we've got some pretty stable weather outside for us. Now it is 42 degrees. That's what it's going to read at least in your car. Feels like 36, though. We still have that wind out of the northwest moving at about 12 miles per hour. And I'm here to tell you, Probably not going to go anywhere. Actually, we're just going to go up from here in regards to the actual wind speeds. Now, that being said, here's a look at that day planner for your Tuesday. We've got sunshine, though. That's the good thing. Uh, sunshine for most of today. The only reason the icon switches to the stronger wind is because the wind will be more headliner-like. But the sunshine's not going in away or going anywhere. 
We're going to see that by about 2 o'clock. That's when we're going to officially tip into that 20 mile per hour wind zone. That's the sustained wind speeds. This is not even the wind gusts. Wind gusts can be reaching anywhere from about 30 to 35 miles per hour. So these temperatures are a little misleading as with uh, winds out of the northwest, typically out of the west, they're a little bit cooler. Now this is a look at what's happening up until about tomorrow, going into the afternoon, evening, almost Thursday. You'll see that we have really no precipitation associated with these stronger winds. In fact, we're looking at some very pleasant conditions going into our Thursday where we'll have some beautiful clear skies. We will see some precipitation just uh, in our surrounding areas, just passing quickly through places like McCall. We'll get a, maybe a pocketed shower over in Ketchum, parts of eastern Idaho. But really, again, nothing is going to be coming in the way of the magic and mostly tre or, uh, treasure and mostly magic valleys. Now, the one thing that the wind is going to be bringing us is maybe a couple headaches and just things to be mindful of. Securing of the loose objects, I'm just telling you this right now because this is a headache. This is going to maybe be a day ruiner if you don't get ahead of it now. If you have a wreath, a cute little Easter wreath on the door, cute little Easter decorations in the front yard, maybe you have kids toys in the backyard, or maybe it's just your pillow cushions because you were enjoying your weekend because the weather was so nice. Bring that inside. The wind speeds will be just warm or just high enough that you will see that you're going to have to be playing you know, an Easter egg hunt with some of those things. You might even lose some of those decorations into a neighbor's yard or who knows where. So uh, just save yourself the trouble. Get ahead of it now. Power outages, not likely, but they are possible. Always a little possible when those winds start to kick up as, uh, as high as they will be. And then uh, down trees, debris kicking up. That's also a possibility when we start to see those winds up uh, into the 30, 35 mile per hour territory. That being said, here's a look at your Treasure Valley forecast and high temperatures for today. We're looking to be anywhere from the high 60s, low 70s. So temperatures are uh, still kind of working themselves out with Mother Nature. We're going to start to see a little decrease back to our seasonable averages. Partly cloudy skies over in the West Central Mountains with temperatures anywhere from the low 60s into the high 40s. 48 is that forecasted high for McCall. Taking a look at what to expect in the East Central Mountains, we're looking at temperatures anywhere from the high 40s into the mid to high 50s. And then moving into the Magic Valley, here's a look at some of those temperatures. Partly cloudy skies, we're looking at the 60s across the board unless you'll be in Burley. We have a high of about 59. Now seven day extended. Well, if you're uh, kind of over the cloudy conditions, good news is, like I said, Thursday, we've got clear sunny skies and that sunshine is not going anywhere until at least Saturday. All right, Frankie, thank you. 621 is the time after the break. Goats are coming to the rescue, helping this year's fire season before it starts. That's next in trending news. and we're taking a live look outside. This is the village at Meridian, of course, thanks to our Bronco Motors Hyundai Tower cam. And uh, it is extremely dark out there. It really is. Thank goodness guys. for that tree there. It's just illuminating the square. Yeah, good job, tree. Yeah. The yard house sign. He feels so alone. On. He's right. like, I'm just the lone tree. Yeah, Shining my light. <laughs> okay. Always. Be that tree, people. Yeah. Be the tree. <laughs> All right. Moving on, trending this morning with wildfire season fast approaching officials in California, they are deploying a fierce four legged approach to fire protection, right? The city of Sacramento has put to work a hungry herd of roughly 400 goats to gobble and gorge on <laughs> overgrown grasses all over town. Whoa, look at him go. City of Sacramento is put to, oh, I just said all this. Uh, so they are going to be <laughs> eating all this stuff. Uh, they with hotter temperatures on the way. The risk of wildfires is increasing, so the best offense is a goat defense. In fact, these all natural lawnmowers, which I'm going to call them from now on, can reportedly clear two acres of brush a day and in hard to reach places that heavy machinery can't get to. Uh, that that definitely makes sense. Look at them go. Someone has a GoPro go. strapped in. A oh, there goat they pro? are. A goat pro? Oh, that was so clever. I wish I would have thought of that. You win. <laughs> Well done. Oh, he's throw. he's happy. Yeah. Oh, really. oh. or not? Like, he's Whoa. Just, <laughs> that was like, <laughs> that was the bad one or something. That was that shot. Oh, go. Man. He was the black sheep. He was, but not really. Had... Look at these little guys. Those are the black sheep. Oh, those are fun. I would. Pet I most saw of those. some um, a herd of sheep. They weren't goats, but up sheep. in sort of the sunny slope area, oh. munching on all of the vegetation around the the vineyards. Oh. And they do this, yeah. you know. But you know. It's least, incredibly effective. I mean, it's beneficial for everyone. Yeah, and they're stuffed. They're like, couldn't eat another weed if I wanted they to. They could, probably. They <laughs> endlessly hungry. <laughs> they are. All right, the Big Easy and the big game, or games, that is, City of New Orleans, wrapping up preparations for college basketball's biggest moments. The NCAA Men's Final Four set to play out in the Superdome this weekend. It puts New Orleans in the spotlight in a big way, bringing uh, with it a bump for the city's economy. The tournament starts Saturday with Kansas taking on Villanova and Duke and UNC also facing off. 
This will be the first time the two North Carolina rivals meet in the NCAA men's tournament. I don't even believe that as a sports fan. The Duke and North Carolina have never met before in the Final Four. Yeah, it feels like <clears throat> they would. Yeah. Because they're both real good, right? So those, those are historic programs, right. historically good. Well, so. I guess this is kind of cool to get to see that. Yeah. Like a face-off like that. So did, did anyone have a bracket that got this far, no. I wonder? Because um, in the beginning, there were a lot of upsets, yeah. right? Yeah. After uh, I'd read, after the first round of the tournament, there were no perfect brackets anymore. You would just no. have to like close your eyes and have been picking at random at that point. Because if you had made any like logical guesses, this yeah. is not what you would have expected. Not, not Very whatsoever. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Astronaut food, <laughs> completely different subject. No. Yeah. Getting a major upgrade, celebrity chef style. Jose Andreas is preparing a special version of his signature paella to send up to the International Space Station. So the chef concentrated not only on giving the Spanish staple bold flavors the astronauts would actually enjoy, but also um, fulfilling strict nutritional requirements set by NASA. So the finished product is scheduled to go up to the ISS next month. It will uh, ride alongside the first mission to the International Space Station with an entirely private crew. Axiom Space is funding this trip. I love paella. Yeah, me too. I was just thinking that. Like, if you can get a good paella up there. Oh, there they are. Yeah. Or there he is, I should oh say. Oh, my gosh. Um, Especially when you're in space and you're like, man, I could really man. use some savory food. Oh, they're bringing it up. I'm just sick of this ice cream. <laughs> yeah, these freeze dried dipping ice dots, cream. man. Yeah. <laughs> wow, look, look at there that. There it is. It's in, it has to be, I guess, in a bag like that. Oh, man. That always, every time I have that dish, I'm just such a dummy and I always yell, paella. And people are like, why are you doing that? And I say, it's funny to me. Oh, my. Gosh. But paella, but that was a fun story. Uh, paella is wonderful, though. Huge fan. Yeah. So. And nutritional, the way he made it. Oh, is you it? know, that he was saying for the NASA astronauts. Oh, yeah, that's okay. right. Good. Um, time now for GMI Wants to Know. Today is National Mom and Pop Business Owners Day. So we wanted to know maybe about some of your favorite, 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 local. I'll give you all the favorite. I just, yeah. Favorite local. I blurred those two words together. <laughs> you knew what I meant. I did. Uh, Bonnie <laughs> said, uh, Firehouse Pub and Grill in Meridian. Great food, great drinks. You're always treated like family. Uh, I've been by there many times. I've not been in yet. But, but now uh, we, we know we should stop. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Alice says, uh, Hudson Baking Company. Like you had said. Amazing sourdough. Good sourdough. Right, baked goods. Mm -hmm. Always so nice. Uh, Rhea says, The Garage Cafe. Food, absolutely amazing service. Incredible burgers to die for. Ooh. Mm, sounds good. I like burgers. Um, Carrie says, Hard to pick. Weezer has some great ones. Literary Paws comes to mind. Hmm. Hmm, paws okay. spelled like paws? P-A-W-S. Oh, okay. I was like, is this a dog? That's like a uh, cake bakery for dogs with paws? Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, I, I guess, uh, you know, people are naming mom and pop shops. We've been, we've been reading so many uh, restaurants that there's other places, too. True, that are, true, true. Yeah, We're food-centric, uh, though. That's right. Yeah, most of us. Uh, Melissa says, Sunrise Cafe on Main Street in Meridian. Food has always been the best. I'll have to try it. Yeah, that sounds good. I yeah. could use breakfast right now and more caffeine. It is yeah. 6.29 now coming up at our second half hour. If you are looking for a career change, there's an upcoming job fair. We're going to tell you all about it next. And local softball teams are making headlines this season. They're continuing hot streak to the national championships. Coming up next. Today on Good Morning Idaho, as the state grows, our open lands are shrinking. We'll tell you why a local group says not so fast. Plus, Idaho Vision Game is using a high-tech method to track big game. We're going to take you along for the ride. And hey, batter, batter, the CSI softball team is looking to keep up their winning streak. How they're prepping for their next game. Good Morning Idaho starts right now. This is Idaho News 6. Good Morning Idaho. With Kristen Scovira, Matt Sizemore, and Frankie Catafias. Hi there. <laughs> good morning. Welcome to Good Morning Idaho. We're back to Good Morning Idaho. I'm Matt Sizemore. And I'm Kristen Scovira. Thanks so much for joining us on Channel 6, Apple TV, or wherever you might be streaming us this morning. We're just making fun of Matt. We're just like, as, hey, as bad about Hey, bad It's in the script. <laughs> oh, bad about I'm a sports guy. I'll do that. You'll hey, read Frankie, whatever Frankie, you put yeah. on the prompter, whatever really. Hey, Frankie, Frankie. <laughs> Bur yeah. It's like, just, here, birdie, birdie, birdie. Like, you know. Well, you yeah. never, you, hey, you know, Dougie hey, batter. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a common call. You, you yell that to the, the batter. I know, the I know. I just, defense. the only reason we were making fun of you is because your voice changes. It's it like is. when girls get really excited to see each other, they go, oh my gosh, hi. And like the highest, like, you know, pitch they can. Hi, yeah. And then when you see like something baseball, you go, hey, batter, batter. Hey, hey batter, batter. I don't remember doing that. <laughs> 
we'll rewatch. Well, yeah, the we'll, tape we'll later. roll the tapes. We'll roll the tapes. <laughs> <laughs> While we're rolling the tape, so we'll take a look at the weather. <laughs> uh, here's a look at what's been happening over the last couple of hours. Not a lot in regards to the Treasure Valley, but if you take a look down south, just uh, down towards Mountain Home, you're going to see that we have a couple showers that are pushing through the area. We didn't have a lot of wet weather that was widespread throughout yesterday. A couple places saw some pockets of showers, possibly even some thunderstorms, but really it was a pretty mild event, if anything. Uh, we did see a little bit of wind that was a little pesty, um, but we'll talk about wind again for today in just a second. Here's a look at those feels like temperatures. If you're heading out the door right now, 52 degrees in Ontario, about 36 is what it feels like in Boise. Wind is still consistently moving out of the northwest. And it's about 12 miles per hour in Boise with a 23 mile per hour consistent wind speed out in Ontario. And we're going to see that those stronger winds are going to continue to push out uh, towards Twin Falls. Here's a look though at those future wind speeds. We're looking to see anything from about 15 to 20, 25 miles per hour throughout the Treasure Valley with wind gusts upwards to about 30, 35 miles per hour. Hey, Frankie, Frankie, thank you. New this morning, as the Treasure Valley uh, grows, more open spaces are given way to housing developments. And as we've reported, some local groups like the Boise Open Space Alliance and Friends of Magurdio Park are working to permanently protect those spaces. Our Anna Zellian breaks down their efforts to protect Idaho's open lands. The debate between protecting open space and building more housing has been going on for months, even years here in the Treasure Valley. Over the summer, this land on South Coal Road, once designated to be a park, was the center of that debate here in Boise. Now, both the city of Boise and a group of open space advocates are working to protect open space, but they're going about it in different ways. The city of Boise is working to protect open space by placing deed restrictions on all park property or open space within city limits and owned by the city. What we'll be setting up future councils with is really a plan that all of the park properties have specific intended use restrictions on them and it makes it easy to manage in the future. The city can't tell future city council members what to do, but they can make it more difficult to rezone or change the intended use of this land. Under a deed restriction, if any land is used for something other than its intended purpose, ownership would revert back to whoever sold or donated the land in the first place. The city of Boise is now in the process of drafting these deed restrictions for all park and open space properties within Boise city limits and owned by the city. And in the future, any land and annexed into the city of Boise would come with a deed restriction. Some city council members have expressed concern about tying the hands of future city councils. There could be an extreme fiscal disaster within the city of Boise and council, the city council at that time may need to generate cash in order to keep the city afloat. A group of open space advocates says this doesn't go far enough to protect Boise parks and open space, so they've submitted a ballot initiative. Our ballot initiative will require a public vote before the city can sell off or change the land use of parks in permanent open space. The director of the City of Boise Parks and Recreation Department, Doug Holloway, says the city's lawyers are still evaluating whether this is a legal option under state law. Anna Azalian, Idaho News 6. Well, happening today, Boiseans can weigh in on their city budget for the 2023 fiscal year. The city of Boise will receive an update to their proposed budget that's at 9 o'clock this morning. Now, according to the press release, the mayor hopes it will respond to city growth and inflation while still providing support to critical services like housing. The general public can then weigh in on the proposed budget that's tonight at 530 at the Hillcrest Library. You can register uh, virtually or in person all through our website. Happening tomorrow, the Idaho Department of Labor is hosting a job fair at the Wahoo's Galaxy Events Center. There's going to be a variety of employers like TSA, Amazon, the Ada County Sheriff's Office, and much more. Job seekers are advised to bring resumes and be prepared with on-the-spot interview questions. That's happening from 3 to 6 tomorrow evening at 400 West Overland Road in Meridian. For more details, visit our website, IdahoNews6.com. Idaho Fish and Game is tracking big game in the Magic Valley with cutting edge technology. And now they have a better perspective on how these animals are moving through their habitat. Idaho News 6's Bella Bright explains why that's so important to everyone from hunters to businesses. This winter, deer and pronghorn in the Magic Valley were fitted with GPS collars. Now Idaho Fish and Game has data on causes of death, survival rates, migration corridors, and habitat use. Here's how Idaho Fish and Game uses these insights. 
While big game capture projects are ongoing throughout Idaho, the recent Magic Valley capture operation is one of the first collaring projects in the area. For the best results, these projects must occur during the colder months. The reason we do it in the winter is because that's the time that gives us the best chance to get the data that's going to actually help us manage the populations to be to be healthy populations. We keep our chase times very short, two to three minutes. It's a one-time thing. It's not a repeated chase. Idaho Fish and Game uses collar data to inform efforts from businesses and agencies to establish wildlife-friendly fencing, energy development projects, and recreation planning. Migration corridors and habitat use um, is, is really important data for us to use for things like technical assistance. So working with partner agencies like the Forest Service and the BLM who actually manage the landscape, we can provide the data to them to help inform some of their decisions. Fish and Game is working with neighboring states on migration modeling efforts using collar data. The survival information tracked by the collars also helps determine hunting tag limits. Bella Bright, Idaho News 6. Well, Idaho Fish and Game have also approved changes to this year's deer and elk hunting season due to an outbreak of chronic wasting disease near Riggins and Grangeville. Hunting changes this season, they include adding extra tags for deer and elk, as well as mandatory CWD testing for any hunter that is bringing a deer, an elk, or a moose out of Riggins and Grangeville areas. The College of Southern Idaho softball team looks to continue their streak of wins in pursuit of another national championship. Just their uh, willingness to learn and grow in the game and uh, grow as individuals, um, it, you know, has been big for this team. One, two pitch from Walters. Swing to miss that strike three. The number 16 Golden Eagles have won 21 of their last 22 games. Coming off a four game sweep against Utah State University Eastern, coach Nick Baumert says his team has the chance to leave behind a legacy. I think, you know, with that idea that we're going to have a legacy season, you know, we can get over those hurdles um, a lot easier when we have that focus. That focus has led to some top performances from the College of Southern Idaho. Most recently, Gracie Walters throwing a no hitter and allowing no runs scored last week. Uh, I think ended the week with 21 strikeouts, only giving up three hits. Uh, you know, her had a zero ERA. And as the season continues, Coach Bomber wants to see a certain mindset stay with his players. You know, that mentality of you make, you know, the routine plays all the time and the great plays, you know, some of the time, uh, kind of taking that mentality the rest of the way. The Golden Eagles moved up three spots in the national rankings today and have 26 more games this season. CSI takes on Colorado Northwestern Community College this Friday. Isaiah Sharp, Idaho News 6. And the Boise State softball team is climbing the D1 ladder this year as they break into the top 25 list for the first time this season after winning nine of their last 10 games. Boise State's also undefeated in the Mountain West with a 6-0 record. Now, the Idaho News 6 traffic report brought to you by Larry Miller. Well, at 642, we are taking a look at I-84 Maple Grove this morning. A couple cars sprinkled here or there and, uh, well, anywhere heading that's uh, in that east round direction. We're not seeing anyone really heading in the westbound directions, and that's pretty uh, pretty normal. Here's a look at some of the travel alerts you need to know for today. We've got a cool start to the morning. It feels like 37 degrees in Boise. You should check your gas tank, too, if you're going to be heading out anytime soon. Average gas price in Boise right now is about $4.54. And uh, gusty winds, well, that's going to be a concern for today with uh, winds up to about 35 miles per hour. You're going to feel that in your steering wheel, so make sure you use two hands when driving uh, to and from work. Ricky, thank you. Okay, we're taking a live look outside thanks to our Bronco Motors Hyundai Tower Cam. Still ahead, we have a look at your top headlines from across the nation. Negotiators from Russia and Ukraine just wrapped up peace talks in Turkey. Leaders from both sides called the negotiations constructive. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is expected to give a statement within the next few hours. Today, House Committee will look over President Biden's proposed budget for 2023. The budget includes more than $800 billion for defense, which some critics say is too low. It also includes a minimum 20% tax on households worth more than $100 million, which the administration hopes will help lower the national debt. Well, we're taking a look at those current temperatures for you this morning. 42